start. Um, so our speaker today uh, is Vitali Arimer from Santiago de Chile. Uh, Vitali obtained his PhD in 2006 in the Republic of Moldova uh, with the PhD thesis entitled Cooperative Effects in Excited Electronic System and Multiquantum Interaction with Bosonic Fields and the advisor was Nikolai Inaki. And then he stayed one year more for postdoc in uh, the same institution, uh, the Institute of Applied Physics of the Academy of Science. And they spent one year uh, in Grenoble at the CNRS. And uh, finally, he um, uh, started a longer uh, postdoctoral experience with Miguel Orozco uh, in Santiago de Chile. And in 2014, he got a permanent position. So he's visiting us for a couple of days. It's a pleasure to introduce him seminar quantum correlation and critical phenomena in cavity QPD networks. Thank you very much for your uh, presence here. Uh, I'm going to uh, present to you for your attention our recent works uh, in collaboration with Professor Miguel Orsak, PhD student, now he is a um, postdoc, Raul Cotto, and other collaboration. Uh, during our works uh, like two, three years, less two, three years. So our main uh, <coughs> research is based on, uh, uh, at this moment, on uh, cavity QED networks or array, how we know in uh, literature. So here I will present um, uh, some results about quantum correlations, how we uh, compute these quantum correlations, which kind of effects we can find about this quantum correlations, and uh, some connection to critical phenomena of phase transition in some system. So uh, the talk is based on two parts, major parts, so uh, two different models, uh, but they are very uh, close in uh, each one. So the first part will be based on the model of atom cavity fiber network, so, uh, and here we will uh, uh, compute the different uh, quantum correlations and classical correlations like entanglement, quantum discrete, entropic and uh, geometrical uh, so uh, values. After that, I'll pass to the second part of the talk where I'll present a kind of um, system which we name uh, like an array of cavities but uh, without connection by fiber, so we'll be just close uh, one to each. So uh, here I will uh, discuss about the model which uh, we know like James can cover model for this system cavity QED network and I will show the results where we study a kind of phase transition superfluid to multi insulate in this system. Okay, so let's start with the first part. Uh, our model we consider two cavities. So the first cavity and the second cavity. Each cavity has a two-level system, two-level atom, with the one mode of the cavity. Uh, here is a fiber connect, which connects uh, the two cavities. So uh, we have uh, the whole system uh, uh, based on three parts. So one cavity second cavity and fiber. These are three small systems. And we have the environment, and we have a connection uh, to the environment by um, <coughs> coupling with the rays gamma 1, gamma 2, and gamma 3. So our buff in, gener in general is uh, thermal buff. In this case, I will uh, consider like um, zero temperature, but we studied also on finite temperature. We can see different uh, uh, situations. Uh, so the interaction of atom with cavity mode is uh, uh, based on G1, G2, and the uh, fiber mode is connected to the cavity mode by uh, the rate nu. So we have just one uh, one mode, which is just one mode of the fiber. In general, the fiber we have many modes, but here we Uh, the image? 
Ahora sí. So uh, uh, we have uh, just one mode uh, fiber. This approximation is, uh, is is a good approximation in the case of short uh, fiber limb. So if you have not so long fiber, so it's it's a good approximation to have just one mode. One or two or two directions. Two or two uh, no, it's two. Yes. Okay, so the system is composed by two atoms draped in separated cavities and connected by fiber. So the cavities and fiber exchange energy with thermal environments at different temperatures. So we have uh, three independent buffs, thermal buffs. So each subsystem change the energy. This is not a uh, common buff, it's independent buff. Uh, each one to its uh, proper temperature. So we have the Hamiltonian uh, of the system, which is uh, composed by two parts, usually the free Hamiltonian and the interaction Hamiltonian. The free Hamiltonian is based on the, uh, <coughs> on the energy of uh, the electromagnetic field in the fiber, here in the cavities, two cavities, and here is the energy of the atoms. And this uh, Hamiltonian uh, defines the interaction between the atoms and the cavity mode, interaction between the fiber mode and the each mode of the each but, cavity. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, of because course. Uh, you mean in the, in the fiber? Yes, exactly. But here is one mode. Yeah, but he asked you, yeah, and go. Ah, I, I understand, yes. And this is the start of the point. Like, yeah, so you can, you can uh, here you can play with the length of the fiber, I suppose, in order to, I see, to... I think you should, okay. So you say you didn't count this process, can be important in quantum thing because interference can create something. Yeah, I am agree. We can interference can create something. But uh, we don't uh, we don't count yes, of course. We don't count but better to think about because maybe in future. Yeah. Because you can create that state for example. Yes. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. It could be. Uh, well, here is uh, uh, this kind of system is based just on the transmission of the correlations. Let's say. Uh, and, uh, okay, maybe you continue. Yeah, of course. But thanks for uh, suggesting. It's important to know it. Okay, so uh, we will use standard methods of study in quantum optics, and uh, so uh, we will simul simulate the dynamics of the system, uh, where we will consider a kind of approach which is described in the uh, book of Peter Gioni, uh, for example, and uh, we name uh, this uh, approach like micro situation, and was developed by Scala and Maniscalco in. 2007. After that, uh, 
one student of uh, Miguel Orsa also used this uh, approach to study the system. And uh, we can describe the system reservoir in interaction in, uh, in a kind of Markovian equation, so uh, Markovian evolution. Um, what we'll do, so we'll uh, use this uh, approach and consider jumps between the eigenstates of the system, uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, here I will present just a few details about the, the method, how we uh, develop our uh, study. So in order to, to use, so we will pass to the basis of dress states and uh, we define a kind of uh, vector here. Uh, where we have the atom 1, atom 2, the states of atom 1, atom 2, cavity 1, cavity 2, and 5. So we are representing this form just for simplicity. And uh, the state of the atom can be in ground or excited state. So the cavities uh, define the states of 0 photon, 1 photon, 2 photons, and so on. Um, well, if uh, we compare with uh, another uh, models and studies, um, in the literature we found just uh, this kind of system, just studied up to maximum two excitation in all the systems. Let's say we can have buff atoms excited and no photons in this system. So this is maximum two excitation in all the systems. Without the buffs. Uh, here we tried to so this for analytical uh, description. So up to two excitation mass. So here we developed up to two analytically, and after that we did it uh, numerically for more excitation. So we can include more photons in the system. Okay. So. Uh, if we have an excitation in the system, a number of dressed state can be calculated by this uh, formula. And the quantum uh, system is dissipative. So because we have a connection, we have the uh, output of our energy from the system to the buffs. So in that case, the ground state of, of the system should be introduced in this uh, uh, approach. And the ground state is uh, named like zero here. So we have ground, ground, zero, zero, no photons, no impurity, no impurity, and no final. And the buff atoms are in the ground state. OK. So for example, of course, the, the Hilbert space of the Hamilton is very large if you have uh, many um, excitation. For example, if you have two excitation, the Hamilton is composed like uh, 19 to 19. It's increasing a lot when we just introduce one excitation. So, and even numerically, it's, it's not so easy to diagonalize and uh, to compute everything in, in this case. So, we develop numerically up to six excitations. What I will show you. So, uh, we did like we have two excited state of the atoms and up to four photons, for example, in all the systems. Okay, the evolution of a system is described by this uh, master equation. We have the. Uh, may I ask? Uh, yeah. You say about six excitations. Because we have two level systems in each carpet. Yes. And, uh, excitation uh, of atoms and photons. Okay. Uh, photons, they come from uh, photons. How they come? Uh, so you have, for example, the uh, two level system well, excited. So you have one channel. Sorry? Fiber. You have one channel and fiber. You have two level system and one and two level system and yes. So you excite uh, for each uh, cavity you excite. But you have a connection to, to buffs, to thermal buffs. You can uh, even. Ah, you have uh, absorbed. Yes, one you can even absorb. Yes. Because you, when you represent it, you say decay, but not absorption. But in general, you can uh, have absorption. Yes, but you can also prepare your state in, uh, with uh, photos. Okay. Is that 
then I have a question because uh, I mean two level system is uh, kind of an atom in each level or, or how? Sorry? It's not clear for me. Two level system you can see, right? Yes. So in each level you have an uh, atom, so or how you can see? One atom. 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 Yes. Yes, yes, all this is. Okay, so you have this, in this master equation, you have the, the part which is Hamiltonian, and you have the. You so have also total six excitations. Sorry? In total six excitations. Yes, yes, in total. Yes, yes. Even you can include the buff. Yeah, yeah, that's not. Because I thought about the each cavity excitation. No. So, uh, here you have the losses part in this master equation, the losses part in this formalism of uh, microscopic uh, master equation can be, uh, can be defined in this form, where we have uh, different uh, operators here. I will show you that these operators can be decomposed on the eigenstates of your system, on these uh, dresser states, uh, on this uh, equation where A and A uh, small a are operators of photons. And uh, uh, these uh, big omegas so, uh, uh, are the um, eigenvalues in, uh, in these phases. So, and we define this uh, energy of this frequency omega bar like a difference between two uh, eigen energies. Yes? Okay, we choose this uh, relation between the eigen energies. So, this is eigen energy of the ground state of all your system, which is zero. And after that, we, we have the, all the eigen energies in this present um, state basis. OK. Uh, so here we have a new uh, rate gamma, which is expressed by uh, in, this, uh, in this relation, we have a connection to, to the buff via the temperature, yes, so. And in general, we can include any value of the temperature, not just zero. OK, if uh, we pass uh, to dressed uh, states, we can uh, develop the equation for uh, density matrix and find the, we decompose to these uh, eigen uh, states. E M and phi N, we obtain rho M N, and we can find the analytical expression of this uh, master equation for these uh, elements. And after that, we can start to compute what we want in our system. So what we'll do next, and here is a representation in case of our system of the uh, eigen, uh, eigen uh, frequencies. So here we have the uh, ground state of all the system. We have no zero excitation. In case of one excitation in your system, we have so uh, five additional. This is uh, one more. So we have six in general for one excitation in the system. For two excitations in the system, we have uh, 19. And when uh, n is bigger, so the subspace increases a lot. Yeah? OK. So the dumping rates. Uh, play the central role in our model because their dependence on the temperature of the reservoir implies a complex exchange mechanism between the parts of the global system. So here in this study we included this uh, uh, important uh, thing of the, uh, of the environment, thermal environments, which uh, appear uh, via the gamma in master equation where is uh, temperature dependence. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go uh, and uh, see how we will measure the atomic correlations. So 
our objective is to measure the correlation between atom in one cavity and atom in another cavity, which will be considered like cubic. Yeah. So, in this particular uh, uh, study, we will consider a particular uh, uh, initial state for a matrix, a density matrix of the atoms. So we have two qubits and prepare these two qubits in a kind of uh, bell diagonal state. Uh, so this is a kind of uh, a X4 matrix. We have uh, elements just in the above diagonals. And the bell diagonal uh, state is a particular state where you can include just three parameters. You can find here C1, C2, and C3. So all the elements depends just on these three uh, parameters, which you can uh, uh, choose uh, the values between, uh, between 0 and 1. <coughs> Sorry? Yes. yes. <coughs> so here we have these elements. And if you prepare your system in this, uh, in this model, you prepare the system in this uh, initial state, uh, the system uh, preserves this uh, symmetry of X4, so in, in the evolution. So you always will have just this elements different. Uh, so, uh, different. so the first uh, measure of the correlation we will consider entanglement. And we use two kind of measures. Relative entropy of, uh, entropy of entanglement, which is entropic uh, quantity. And the, the second one is geometric entanglement. So it's just the geometric interpretation of the entanglement. So for the case of Bell diagonal state, uh, we have uh, the calculation of the relative entropy of entanglement by this uh, equation, where you have the lambda are just the uh, uh, four eigenvalues of the density matrix. So uh, easy uh, computer, numerically no problem, so we can uh, find very easy this value of uh, relative entropy of entanglement. And the geometric measure of entanglement is uh, computed by this formula. So it's uh, here you have C is concurrence, it's usual concurrence uh, defined by Wooters in 97, 98. So where, uh, in this case, when you have a bell diagonal state, it's easy computed by this formula, where you have C1, C2, and C3. So it's, uh, it's just uh, we use uh, already known and uh, developed the equation from the literature. So you can find this. this. And this is uh, normalized the value of the geometric entanglement. Uh, why we choose two, entropic and geometric? Because we will uh, introduce. Uh, also, uh, the concept of a quantum discord, entropic quantum discord, and geometric. And so we want to just go there with quantum discord. OK. Uh, I don't know if, uh, uh, if everybody here knows the concept of the quantum discord. No? You can introduce it. I should introduce a bit. So the, the idea of quantum discord was proposed at the beginning so in 2001 appeared two papers independently. So one paper was proposed by Henderson and Bedrell, published in Journal of Physics A, and another <coughs> uh, paper was uh, uh, so uh, published by Oliver and Zurich in uh, PDL in Physical Review Letters in 2001. Also, one I think this one was sent before. They always so who was first? But uh, even if they, uh, uh, let's say, uh, generate the idea of quantum discord, but they uh, go by different ways. So they have no, uh, let's say, the same, exactly the same calculation. No. But at the, at the end, uh, uh, the, uh, the studies after this, these two papers develop the idea of quantum discord. Uh, after a long time, this was just philosophical idea up to 2008 when uh, uh, another uh, uh, Luo proposed the method of calculation of this one, this, let's say, 
and how to go from a, a philosophical concept to some uh, mathematical calculation. Well, uh, to compute the idea, to compute the quantum discourse for a case of a bipartite quantum system, uh, here is used the concept of the quantum mutual information, uh, which uh, compute or measure the total correlation in the system. So, the mutual, uh, quantum mutual information is uh, based on this uh, equation. So we have uh, a bipartite system, which is defined by uh, rho a b. So the mutual information can be computed like entropy of the subsystem a plus entropy of the subsystem b and minus the entropy of the mix, so of the, how to say, of the combination of both. Full state. Huh? Full state. Yeah, full state, exactly. Uh, here, when you have a, uh, the quantum system, so you can uh, compute the row A, like a trace of the row A B and uh, by B and so on. Uh, so also you can uh, write in this form. This relation is, is just uh, developed to this form, where you have ent uh, this uh, entropy, which is named quantum conditional for name and entropy. Quantum mechanics. Well, after that, uh, the idea is to develop the concept of, one, uh, of classical correlations. The classical correlation here is a bit difficult to, to understand how they define this and why they define like that. So the idea is to compute this different difference. Pardon. Uh, so they compute this difference and take the condition to have the maximum. Where, uh, where a BK is a kind of projector operators defining a measurement for the subsystem B only. So this, uh, this kind of defi uh, definition is not symmetric. You can do the, let's say, you can do the measurement on the subsystem B and uh, uh, look what's happening in subsystem A. And after that change, you can do measurement on the subsystem uh, A and let's say what's happening in system B. So if uh, between A and B you have just classical so you, you, you now from quantum mechanics, if you measure subsystem A, this doesn't change nothing from subsystem B because you have just classical correlations. If this quantum correlation should be something changed. So, and after that, if you can compute this, well, this, uh, this stuff is very uh, hard to compute. Analytically, it's impossible. But numerically, even numerically, it's hard sometimes to compute. But for, uh, for easy system, it's not so hard. So after that, you can uh, compute this difference between mutual information and classical correlations. And this relation, you name quantum disk. That means that from all your correlation, you just take off the classical correlation, so what you obtain is one of the relations. So, uh, and well, uh, after that we, uh, was shown that if you compute for some system is different, which is different from the entanglement, because up to these ideas of quantum correlation, of quantum discord, everybody considers that entanglement is, is the quantity which measure all the quantum correlations. After that appear this idea that it's not enough uh, to have just in time the quantity to measure all the quantum correlations in between two subsystems, for example. So this was the idea. Okay, uh, just in few words because uh, it's not so easy to to <coughs> to explain the concept of quantum discord uh, based on some uh, philosophical ideas from the beginning, but. Uh, how it's done uh, numerically and, uh, let's say, mathematically, I will show you. After that, uh, we will measure also a concept of geometrical quantum discord. Uh, geometrical quantum discord is based on the, let's say, on the distance. So if you have in this space, let's say, a quantum state, rho, you can, and <coughs> you can um, 
measured between this uh, your state and some if you find some classical state you can measure the distance this uh, geometrical distance uh, between these two states and say how far is your quantum state from some classical state so is this concept of uh, let's say geometrical quantum discord and in case of viewers is uh, uh, developed this concept of the how to measure this distance, which is named in, uh, in mathematics like Buhr's distance. So it's computed by this formula, doesn't matter, but it's uh, after that, uh, if you introduce this bell diagonal state, so it's easy computed by this uh, expression. Okay, let's go to the results, because uh, interesting results in that case. So we prepare our two qubits in bell diagonal state. And uh, let's see what's, uh, what's happening. So in, uh, in our simulations, we consider the, our system like two atoms with long radiative lifetimes. And the transition frequency of the atom is a uh, free parameter. And here we can uh, use the addition also uh, uh, with time. And the cavities and fiber exchange their energies with individual reservoirs at the same dumping rates, just for simplicity, we put gamma 1, gamma 2, and uh, uh, new, for example, sometimes can be equal. The atom cavity coupling satisfies the constraint of the Markovian environment, so you should consider this. And we choose G1 equal to G2 equal to uh, 10 gamma. So the, uh, the coupling between atom and cavity is, is, uh, is uh, larger than the coupling between each system to the buff. Uh, so uh, if we prepare in this bell diagonal state with some uh, here, ah, so sorry, but I forgot to put here the the values of C1, C2, and C3 because sometimes are very important. So if we choose these values of C1, C2, and C3, if you remember the initial condition of the bell diagonal state, we can see very interesting uh, effect here. So the red line is quantum discord. The blue line is classical correlation. The green line is uh, geometrical quantum discord measured by viewer's distance. The magenta one is relative entanglement of uh, relative entropy of entanglement. And the brown one is geometrical entanglement. So we have, uh, let's say, entanglement, discord, and classical correlations here, measured by entropic and geometric, uh, the quantum discord. So we see very interesting effect. The quantum discord starts from uh, some value and is uh, preserved during some period of time. So we have no, even if you have a connection to thermal buffs, so you have the loss in your system, but you have no losses of the quantum correlations, which is strange. Yeah, because we, we know that quantum correlations are declared in the time if you have the uh, quantum moving system. So with we can observe very easy for entanglement. For entanglement, so it's easy to observe here, but we have the uh, losing of the entanglement in the system. But here, for quantum discord and for geometrical quantum discord, we have a kind of plateau. So we have an effect which is in literature was observed like in 2010 in some system, simple system by uh, Maniscal, Cotillo, and uh, one student, and they name this uh, effect like frozen, frozen quantum correlation, or freezing effect. After that, in one moment, so in that case, we have the de declaring the classical correlation, but in one point, we have strange changing. So the classical correlation goes constant, and the quantum correlation uh, start to decrease up to one moment. So here we have a kind of sudden, uh, sudden, uh, uh, what's the name? sudden entanglement death. Sudden, sudden death entanglement of the buff geometric and entropic. 
but we have no, uh, uh, let's say, sudden uh, discord. So after that, you have a kind of oscillation on these states. And, uh, and so we can see, of course, this plateau start in time to, uh, to go like, uh, let's say, not, uh, not parallel to the time uh, axis, but start to, to be inclined. But yes. even for you to explain why uh, classical regulation can be like that. Sorry? Uh, classical regulation can be like that. Why? Yes. Because this defines all problems. Yes, of course, because when you measure the quantum discord, so you have a mutual information. Uh, well, I have no here mutual information uh, line, but it's mutual information is like, like, what's the uh, You know that many orbs exist on these uh, effects and no explanation <laughs> to this. No explanation. No, uh, let's say just in sometimes uh, some particular explanation, but not explanation. Uh, universe, some universal answer. Very, it doesn't exist. Why? Well, uh, because you pay attention at the beginning part of that, but then you have also part of later, which is also maybe for classical correlation. No, discord. For discord here. Yeah, you have part of this. Yes. But uh, I say you that this plateau is parallel, is uh, let's say is uh, like that, and just for a short time period. After that, it's, it start to put like that. No, but it does. Don't play game because you pay attention to the beginning. You say frozen yes. relation, and uh, here this plateau much larger than this. Than you mean this plateau is much larger? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Ah, it's because this is you, you see that if you start from some, uh, let's say, some <laughs> negative uh, time, you you get this. Uh, it's the same. It's okay. So you have results, so which is interesting, but not understanding. Not understanding at all. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> because. Uh, I say you that uh, nobody understands the, the uh, motivation why it appears. Yeah, because the green line is not really a plateau. It looks like a, it's a parabolic. It looks a bit. Yes, it looks a bit. It's it's true. It looks a bit. It's not exactly the, uh, the plateau. Uh, here we have the uh, so uh, we see if. Uh, Ah, well, here it's, uh, sorry, here the temperature is zero. Here is zero temperature. So no thermal photons at all. And in that case, in that case, this, uh, this effect will be uh, conserved for a larger time. Yes. But if you include the, uh, so here is answer to your question. So why we consider many excitation in all the system. So if you include the, even if uh, we can include the thermal photons, so if you consider the uh, buff of the, the fiber connected to some thermal uh, so, uh, temperature, we consider here like four thermal photons just for buff, three means for buff, and uh, we this effect that this plateau is for quantum uh, for quantum discord, you see here the red one it started to be like that. So, in that case, but we can reconstruct this situation. So, if we increase the uh, coupling between the cavity and fiber, so here, for example, we can increase the new, so we can reconstruct this plateau and put it horizontally. So somehow we show here that it's possible to to 
engineer this, uh, this effect by uh, a stronger coupling uh, between the fiber and connecting modes. So this is the idea. And after that, we, uh, we changed a bit the C1, C2, and C3, just looking what's happened if you choose differently C1, C2, and C3. And we found a different situation that by green, we have the same geometrical Burris distance. We find a kind of, well, let's, let's see just this point when we have a sudden transition, strange sudden transition. So we have these sudden transitions here and here. So we found just two sudden transitions uh, when the uh, quantity of uh, geometrical is changed. Very strange. So, uh, but in the same time for quantum discord, we have just one sudden transition here. So this was observed in, uh, in another, uh, I think that was observed in uh, uh, like the whole down system or nuclear resonance. So this kind of transition, double sudden transition for quantum discord what we will see. And published they published in uh, physical letters that they observed experimental also this kind of uh, double sudden transition. Okay. Here we have uh, an experiment which was realized. It's the same model. We have two cavities connected by fiber. Was uh, realized in the laboratory of the Rempe in uh, Germany, and they measured the correlation between these two qubits. So they they can uh, measure the uh, correlations by connecting by fiber these two cavities. They used like 20 meters, I think, the length of the fiber. They do it in one laboratory, in one cavity. Another cavity, and they uh, computed the quantum correlation. How uh, uh, how are uh, transmitted the quantum correlation from one cubit to another one? I will not enter into the details. It's just like uh, uh, evidence of some experimental uh, results. So, but then coming back to the question, yes, yeah. only one. <coughs> yes. Ah, no, no, that was in my model, the theoretical model. I mean, you can consider just the short, short uh, fiber limit. But in this case, I, I don't know exactly which they more Ah, no, 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 no. I say just how they realize a, a system experimentally which is very similar to, to our theoretical model. But do they add a theoretical model for their system? Sorry? They have they publish also the theoretical model for the no, no. Just experiment. It's just experiment. Yes. No, no, no. No, no uh, correlation between our results and their results. I mean, how they realized the similar model experimentally and they, they completed some quantum correlation. They, they computed the just in time. You know, okay. In this system, we found uh, this kind of uh, phenomena like sudden changes and freezing of the correlation for uh, KVT QED network with thermal dissipation channels. So we show controlling the dissipation mechanism when we control the quantum correlation uh, with different uh, multiple sudden changes and freezing period. So we can uh, see also a kind of double sudden change in the dynamics of pure, pure, pure uh, quantum discord. And uh, so the conclusion of this part is that quantum correlation in the present model can be optimized by engineering just the fiber bars. Because we, uh, we tried also to choose different uh, uh, thermal photons for each cavity, but it's, it's more difficult to, to reconstruct this, uh, this effect to, I mean, uh, to obtain this uh, plateau or horizontal plateau. But it's more easy just to manage the, the fiber buff. And so it's very easy to reconstruct this, uh, uh, this plateau. So better. Uh, the second part, I will go quickly, because the model is almost the same. 
so I, I think that I will uh, pass this. The idea here is about the idea of the proposal of uh, Feynman in uh, the beginning of ages, when the, uh, he suggested the, the proposal how to solve the problems in pieces. And uh, the idea uh, today is now like quantum simulations, quantum simulators. So he proposed to solve complex physical system analytically or numerically uh, when you can't simulate by one very simple system, another uh, system which is very complex. So if you have the solution of this small system and you can build all the same physical phenomena on the complex system, let's say that you have a kind of quantum simulation. Quantum simulation. And after that, he proposed this idea of uh, a quantum uh, universal quantum simulator or quantum computer. So this is a paper uh, in the International Journal of Theoretical Physics in, published in 1982 after his talk in one conference. So, and now it's very, uh, it's very, how to say, uh, curious for many people to, to propose different kind of ideas for quantum simulation. So in this study, we will uh, propose to simulate, let's say, simulate a kind of uh, phenomena which is known in condensed matter, like uh, a phase transition from superfluidity to more insulated or uh, from what insulator to superfluidity. And we will use the optical uh, system, which is like a cavity network. So here you can see, this is from a review of uh, Franco Nori uh, in science a few years ago. So uh, they show here different uh, models based on atoms, ions, and electrons, where you have a physics of main body Anybody physics, where it's very hard to study the physics in case of uh, you have uh, many degree freedom in this uh, large system. So we can choose a small system of just few subsystems. If you are able to solve this small system and prove that this system uh, evidence all the phenomena like uh, another one, so you can conclude some somehow that you can. Uh, have a kind of uh, one simulator. Yeah? Okay. So the idea is based on the on the model of chance coming and Bose Hubbard models. Uh, Bose Hubbard models from condensed matters. Uh, James coming is from quantum optics, the interaction between the atoms and the light. So uh, why are interesting these models for quantum simulations? So the was Howard Hamiltonian is a model which was chosen to firstly to simulate by a system of cold atoms. And in this paper was proposed, in this uh, uh, in 98 was proposed that the Bose Hubbard Hamiltonian can be, uh, can be, let's say, simulated exactly uh, by bosons in an optical lattice. And after that, in 2002, I think, group of uh, the paper in Nature, they published a group of uh, block, so uh, by Granger, and they published this uh, famous experiment in 2002, yes. Uh, so uh, we, we, we consider that uh, the combination between these two models of James Cummings and the uh, Hubbard, which is known in literature like James Cummings Hubbard model, can be a good, uh, a good proposal for a quantum simulator uh, in, the, in the sense that we, you can uh, choose a kind of optical system and uh, show that the phenomena that you found in the system are similar phenomena like in condensed matter, for example. Okay, I think that I will uh, not enter into details in the Bose Hubbard uh, model because this is from, uh, more or less from general quantum physics, uh, and James Cummings model, and I will go directly to this, uh, because I have no uh, 
time, enough time. So I will go directly to the James Cumming Hover model. Uh, we have this kind of uh, system. We have a linear here, linear array of the cavities. So we have one, two, three, and many cavities. In each cavity we have a two level atom. And the cavities are connected by the term which we name like jump. So we have a jump of photon from one cavity to another, and so on. So the Hamiltonian of James Cumming Hubbard model is based on the part which is pure James Cumming Hamiltonian, which is considered the uh, atom energy field, uh, cavity field energy and the interaction between these two. And after that, we put the term of quantum jumps, which is uh, taken from the Wolf-Hubbard model. And we have this combination, which is named like the James Hubbard model. So uh, here the operators A uh, define the, the photons, and we have so the hopping between the photons from cavity G to uh, G plus one. Yeah? And this is the hopping rate. So in general, we can consider n. Uh, number of cavities. So, if we transform this Hamiltonian to the basis of polaritons, so we define polaritons, the concept of coupling between photons and photon and the atom. So, if we map on this uh, basis of polaritons, we get this uh, uh, this uh, against states, which you have. So n photons and the sign minus n plus between these levels. So here you can represent this eigenvalue state. So here we try uh, by one figure to represent the polariton. So the combination between photon and atom in one cavity. And here we define the energy of each level which you have in this. Basis of the states. And delta, which is a very important parameter, this uh, gap is between the uh, frequency of atom and frequency of the cavity. Okay, so in our case, we have like this system, we have, in fact, here are three cavities, but we have considered two cavities in the simple situation. So we have, uh, uh, here is a, a schematic representation of the two phases. So this is uh, considered like superfluid phase of polaritons. This uh, red are like, let's say, like polaritons. This is the combination between, sorry, this, uh, this red are photons, but uh, combined to two atoms, so you have, when you you have in each end the atom place, but they can be uh, connected to each atom in each cavity, or can be just in one cavity. Yes. Okay. So you can, uh, in that case, you can define two phases. The phase of uh, uh, when you have, uh, let's say, the photons like trap with each atom in, uh, in each cavity, which is uh, usually named like mod insulated phase of polariton. And when you have all the photons just in one cavity, that is maybe like a superfluid phase of polariton. Okay, so I think that I will not show the mathematical stuff. What is interesting? Let's uh, study the dynamical phases of the polaritons. So we'll name the, say, uh, the superfluid phase. Here we have uh, this polariton, that means that you have two photons in, let's say, in the left cavity and zero photons in right cavity. Okay? 
So in our system, we have a connection to a reservoir, to a common reservoir, but we have no temperature, at zero temperature. Okay, but we have the open quantum system. So uh, and mod insulator state would be considered when you have one photon in one cavity and one photon in another cavity. Okay, so if we start our uh, system from this phase, from two zero, let's say from superfluid phase, uh, we have here uh, the black curve and the. the uh, Why you call sorry? Why you call this is this is like uh, is the same word taken from the contest matter when you have the uh, so in order to have a more insulated so you have the concept of uh, I mean in quantum optics like a photon mobility. So therefore it but uh, your photons uh, can be uh, how to say it can play mass free in Network, and you can find all the photons just in one cavity or in another cavity or another cavity. Hey, I, I cannot say you <laughs> why exactly they use the same. Uh, let's say the same. No, because in both of them it's superfluid. Because all no, it's not connected. It's not connected to superfluid from uh, let's say. Uh, say no, but you have photons. It's similar to photons, right? Yeah, it is. It's because here you, you, you speak not just about the photons separately, you speak about the quasi particle which is polarized. Yeah, okay, but it's not photons, but it's a trace of the trace of the photons. But the photon is the interaction of atoms. Yeah, it's the excitation between atom and the photon. No, this is used uh, the, the uh, how to say, the, uh, the names are used in the literature. We don't uh, introduce uh, the name. Uh, yeah, but uh, when you read it, something you must be able to in the future. Think it's just because it's not clear. I mean, you can say you have one state which, which is consists of this and that. And then you can say that. But uh, because if you in people do not condense matter, yeah. then they have a certain association. You know, okay, so in condensed matter, uh, when you have a phase of more insulator, you have it, um, you have uh, no transport between the electrons, right? You have a kind of uh, kind of localized state. Yeah, in what is very phase. So in a, in a superfluid state, you have a kind of not localized state. So you have a delocalized state. De state. Yeah. So you have a kind of uh, this fluid of your particles. Let's say in general. Depends on the particle that you study. In this case, it's not a real particle. It's a so it's cell wave particle. Exactly. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this data because in some uh, in some papers they use localized state and delocalized state, and they confuse the people with superfluid and not insulator. So it's you say uh, many times in physics. Uh, Two teams can use different uh, ores and they confuse the uh, readers, which is one and which is another one. But here it's uh, the explication. If you write down, sorry, sorry. if you write down the, the Hamiltonian for excitation, yes, it's very similar to a post power. It's a open term, no sign yes. from side interaction. Exactly. Exactly. Mm, I don't understand. Uh, no, but he can be consistent. Because uh, when he comes with uh, James Cameron, Okay, James Cameron point is uh, two level one. And then he can see Not necessarily two level. No, no, okay. it's two level. Okay, and then he can 
consider uh, some copy text, yes. uh, which is uh, and not clear because he's saying, for example, there is a jumping, a, a, devil, a, a devil one. A jumping two, between two, two cavities. Yes, and but each just for photos. Yeah, yeah. And each cavity is simulated uh, by the jet coming. This will be. Exactly. And then, and then there is a question. This photon comes from first level or upper level. So I don't know what really. it. But it doesn't matter. I, I there, don't is, there, there are these photons that are the result of the excitation. If it's emitted, it's because it's going down. Exactly. It's just the, it's there if there has been a de-excitation. So an emission. So if you have a, the, so the atom pass from the excited state to ground state, for example, you have the emission of the photon in this in this uh, cavity, let's say. This cavity have uh, the lifetime, uh, sorry, this lifetime in this cavity and also connected by the... No, maybe it continues because there are many details hidden, of course, uh, and many questions. It's not easy to explain. Yes, but I, I understood your question. What means superfluid phase or superfluid state? Okay, the answer is connected to localized state or exactly. localized state. That's that's uh, this answer which, uh, uh, for example, use for example use the uh, Immanuel block. I think it's in his, uh, in his. But in uh, in papers, for example, the people's even the first uh, paper uh, published in by uh, Angelakis, for example, uh, where they introduced this uh, original model of James Cameron Cup, they use the 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 words of superfluid and Not more, no? but the idea uh, it's, uh, is, is hidden here. So superfluid state. Let's say that you have two polaritons where you have all the photons just in one cavity and no photons. Yeah, I, I think no problem. And no photons in another cavity. And what insulator state when you have localized state? So you have just one photon in one cavity and another, and you cannot uh, do nothing to have the two photons in another cavity. So it's, I guess it's not easy. So the idea is what we, which results we obtained originally here and different from the, from the um, uh, results in the papers. So usually they, uh, they study the transition from what insulator to superfluid um, uh, by heating of this delta. So all the uh, results up to today usually are connected to this delta. So you can uh, engineer by this delta, increasing the delta. So increasing the delta, you, you have uh, far from resonance your atom with your cavity photon. So by this uh, increasing of delta, you can uh, switch between two phases. You see, so from what is later. Uh, but we show in this uh, in this work that even for delta equal to zero, we can uh, generate this transition by losses, so by connection to the uh, to the thermal uh, buffs. So here we have two situations. We have for uh, black and for uh, uh, blue, we have the polariton like uh, in superfluid state for delta equal to zero and delta different from zero. Here I'm in units of g. Uh, the atom uh, field coupling. And here we can see that no mode insulator phase is almost zero, the amplitude. This is probability of the, to find this polariton in this state. In this state okay? So this is probability, the amplitude of the probability. So here we cannot see, we cannot see this uh, existence of this polariton. And uh, of course, if you start your, from this uh, initial state, you can see this uh, kind of oscillation. After that, there is no losses. Here are no losses. The gamma is zero, no loss. After that, we put losses, we introduce the losses in the system. And we see a very interesting situation with, so the superfluid state is a blue one. Is delta equal to zero here? No, no uh, gap between the energies. And so you start up with increasing the probability to find a more insulating state. So, 
So and disappear the superfluid state and appear the body suit. So in time, this is in time. This is point where this kind of transition occurs. So it's interesting to find a kind of measurement that can find this transition. And we measured the negativity, the entanglement measured by negativity. And we find interesting uh, effect that in exactly in this region where the kind of phase transition occurs, the negativity is maximum. So the entanglement is maximum. So we conclude that the negativity is a good weakness to, uh, to find the, the point of phase transition between superfluid and not Here are two different situations. We have for two different gamma, gamma in, uh, in the values of G, so the small one and the bigger one. And we find that if we choose the gamma, if we increase the gamma, you can pass from this situation to this situation. You find that here is uh, trying to select the superfluid state, but here not at all. And in negativity, you also can see like two, two local maximum in this point and in this point. Here, just one. The rest of probability is uh, being at zero, zero. Yes. You have the losses in this system. And do you understand this, this behavior of the negative? Uh, no, we just find it interesting like a weakness, a good weakness to, to, to measure the phase transition. You see? Yeah, but uh, in that, uh, I would agree with you if I have only one thing, right? But I have two things. Uh, so ah, ah, I understand. Uh, which one should be uh, uh, connected to the phase transition again? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's answered. It comes to the, the answer. Ah, okay. okay, so here you see that if you have this situation, the gamma. Uh, it's small and here gamma is bigger, so you can find the concept of kind of critical gamma. So to, f to find this uh, threshold where no oscillation of the, of the superfluid uh, state. So we find that there exists a correlation, strong correlation between gamma, critical gamma, and hoping rate. So this uh, is like a straight line almost. So if you put this value, so for this hoping, you find exactly more or less the value, which will be critical when you have just uh, the coherence of the superfluid state and no oscillation. So you find just one maximum of the negativity. So you have phase transition from one state, from oscillation of the negativity. You see? Now maybe I comment after because... Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was uh, uh, for two cavities. If you increase the number of cavities, so you uh, increase the number of, uh, 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 let's say, uh, in order to simulate uh, a main body physics uh, system, so you can increase the number of cavities, you have uh, this uh, for uh, mode insulating state, so you can you can see for uh, two cavities, for three cavities, for four cavities. So this uh, transition it started to be like very similar to a thermodynamic phase transition. So you have uh, more evidence, yes, this uh, phase transition. And let's, uh, here is just uh, the form how we compute the negativity. Matrix is zero, so it's uh, it's usual. And the discussion, the conclusion of this part. So in this study, we demonstrated for a system of two coupled cavities with dissipation to individual reservoirs. Uh, the self-trapping effect. This kind of effect uh, from uh, from superfluid to non-superfluid is also a self-trapping effect. So 
many, many uh, names for effects, but it's the same effect at the end. So we found a critical damping rate above which the initial superfluid state disappears in time and mod insulator phase is uh, beginning created. So we prove that negativities can be considered a good weakness that shows that the critical damping rate at critical damping rate is a single peak. So what is the connection between the single critical damping rate? So if you are below the critical damping rate, you have many. So you even can find by this uh, negativity, you can even, uh, let's say, uh, control which should be the, the critical damping rate in order to find this transition uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, so the perspective I think that uh, could be for us interesting to study the influence of the thermal effects because we consider zero temperature and uh, put the, the thermal, uh, let's say thermal photos in the open system. And now our message is that areas of coupled cavities can be considered an efficient quantum simulator of the many body physics. That was the, idea to do this work in this, um, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, well, two parts, uh, two different uh, works, so uh, a bit long. Okay, no, don't worry. Sorry. Just uh, if there is a, if there are a question from someone else, and then we can continue the discussion. Uh, when, uh, Sorry? Uh, when the probability of being in the state, in the one, the state goes yes. to, and there is the other one that not goes up, you mean that your system is just disappearing? Is disappearing the state? I mean, there is the one content and the yeah. one state was going down and the other state was at zero. It means that the state is not. But you have a transition of your system from uh, from one phase to another. Okay, phase. and when this occurs after the modis rotor probability goes down, ah, it ah, means yes. that the state is no longer good. It uh, uh, will not be in mod insulator. You mean here? But you have a decoyers. Okay, there. But me? Yes, that decrease. What is what? It's because decrease. you have an open system, so you lose your excitation. Because you have the quantum systems. Yes. Yeah, it's a, you have no feedback. But this that was our motivation to to look what is happening uh, if you put if you put the uh, thermal photons. You can you can hear uh, let's say uh, uh, Sustain this uh, for a larger period. That's interesting to see. So, to prepare your state in one insulator after this transition or another. Any other quick question? Yeah. Uh,